What is good guys, it's Ray J back with another video. And in this one, I want to break down what's happening with SPY, Tesla, NVIDIA, the QQQ, and a couple of other tickers. I'm going to break down some big news involving the markets that just came out, not to mention how the charts are looking. As I'm seeing some charts are developing some bearish signals that could lead to something very big. Other charts are still looking bullish, so I'm going to give you guys more insights about this. But just know, I'm not a financial planner, so take nothing I say as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please smash the like button. It not only benefits me, but benefits the entire community as a whole. Anyways, let's talk about the market. What on earth is going on so far? Let's look at a nice bounce after we got the CPI report. We got a nice little pump only to get a big rejection after that. Tesla went up to about 211. It was holding up nicely. Then we got a big rejection back down to 200. If Tesla continues with this rejection, we have this imbalance that's going to fill all the way down to 197. But if we get bought back up and we see Tesla defend uh, 202 and some buyers try to hold it above that, there will be potential for us to try to retest at least 205. So we'll be watching to see which way Tesla goes. So far, it is looking a little bit more bearish after getting quite a bearish day despite the market holding up, which is once again showing some weakness. But the question is, what's going to happen? What catalysts are coming out for tomorrow? I want to talk about those first before I break down the charts. So for today, firstly, we had CPI data. I'm not going to go over all the details, just know all the data was once again aligned with expectations. So the data was not horrible. It was not bad. But it also wasn't great. It was pretty good in my personal opinion. I think that's the best word to use to describe it. Pretty good. Uh, I say that because core was at 0.2% month over month. That was what we were expecting. Uh, CPI for year over year was at 3.2%. This was also on the hotter end of what we were expecting, but still decent. When it comes to the month over month data, the data was actually one of the hottest we saw in the last few months. But it was still aligned with expectations, of course. Uh, CPI for all items month over month was at 0.2% as expected. And then year over year was at 2.9% as expected on the hotter end. So pretty good data overall. But the question is, why did the market respond the way it did? Well, one thing worth mentioning is that, yes, the data looks good, at least in the eyes of the Fed. And once again, guys, I know why people call it the CPI. I'm not saying all the data is like 100% accurate. You should trust everything. But I'm just mentioning this just so that you guys understand that this is what the, the you know the Fed is looking at. This is what the market is looking at. So the chart's looking pretty good right now. Nice little decline in inflation. It's been on a bit of a downtrend. All this means is that the rate at which prices are going up is slowing down. And the market is once again looking at this in more positive light. Now, one thing worth noting about it is the fact that we actually saw a little increase compared to what we saw in June and in May from a month-over-month -month basis, which is very common during this time period. So that's something worth noting. We also saw an increase in energy. So that is what helped fuel all items CPI just a bit. So when it comes to the way the market priced this in, the market is now thinking there's a 63% chance we get a 25 basis point cut from the Fed and about a 37% chance we get a 50 basis point cut. So the market is leaning in the direction of us getting a 25 basis point cut. We'll see if that ends up being the case or not. But this was a little bit of a shift from yesterday. Yesterday was almost 50-50. So now we're thinking the Fed's going to have to be a little bit less dovish than what we initially expected. Now, this could change depending on the next CPI report. But for now, that's how the market's kind of interpreting this. This is part of why we ended up seeing a little bit of a dip today before we got bought back up because the buyers are still there, but they're defending. For earnings, we had Dole, which did very well. They beat on EPS and revenue. Good growth in revenue overall by up about 19% and decent earnings. Cisco had earnings as well. And then for tomorrow, we have Alibaba, Walmart, JD, and John Deere. Just wanted to call those out. Uh, right now, uh, the, the VIX is kind of neutral as we're approaching some key supports. And we're seeing the fear and greed index really shifting right here. Now fear is driving the market. It's not extreme fear anymore, at least for now. And we'll see if this holds. Momentum is pretty neutral right now. If we hold above with the 125 daily moving average, we could continue to hold up. If not, we could dip, but we'll just have to wait and see. And the puts and call option positioning, we have the five-day average at extreme fear. Fear is making up the majority of sentiment. And volatility still remains as neutral. Now, for Tesla, I didn't really see much news come out, but there is some talk about how the Model 3's price was 30% higher than January, but EV prices are still dropping overall. So it's a very, very interesting shift as Tesla had some price increases. Uh, it's very important to note uh, for people out there who are saying that Tesla is just cutting all their prices. That's not all that they're doing. And you have to also remember the qualification of the tax credit. That's going to kind of like determine if they're lower or higher. But overall, it's worth noting that Teslas are not that far away from the average car price. Uh, they're not as expensive as some people may make them seem. And there's still some of the top selling cars in the U.S. markets. Just wanted to call that out. Anyways, I don't really want to focus on news and data. I want to focus now on the charts. What do we see moving forward? So Tesla is currently hovering below its 20 EMA. 
In order for us to turn bullish, we've got to reclaim this and get back above 205. So if it breaks 202, look for 205. If we lose 200 and don't hold above that, there's going to be a risk of us dipping down to not just the support at 190, 199, that area, but then also coming down to this imbalance to at least the 197 flat area. From a technical standpoint, we look a little bit more bearish. We did push only to get a big rejection, especially after this big red bar. So this is suggesting we might be coming down to about 197 is the most likely possibility. But we'll see just to be safe because the market is full of manipulation. The reason I say that is because we also have data coming out tomorrow. An hour before the market opens, we have initial jobless claims coming out. Uh, I think I forgot to mention this. We also have some data from the Philly Fed, new orders, employment, and such. And then we also have manufacturing and industrial production numbers coming out at 9.15 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So we have a bunch of Fed speakers tomorrow. We have some data coming out involving employment, the initial jobless claims and such before the market opens, and then lots of production numbers uh, 15 minutes before market open as well. But most of the data comes up before the market opens, manufacturing numbers, uh, production numbers from the industrial sector, unemployment numbers, it's all coming out tomorrow before market open. And then we just have a bunch of Fed speakers as the day goes on. That's pretty much it, at least for what's going to affect the markets. So. We'll see what kind of reaction we get from a technical standpoint. Tesla looks a little bit more bearish, might dip. We were very weak while the market was holding up, so it's not the best of signs. We'll see how things go. Now, SPY is at a critical level. Watch 544 as key resistance. If we manage to break through that, we technically, if we get above the 544s, we're going to be going close to 547. And if that breaks, we turn more bullish. If we fail to hold 544, if we kind of pop and then drop and fail to hold it, there is going to be a risk of us dipping back down to the least 5 42. And if that does not hold, I think I'll be basically watching for a potential test of around 538. That's going to be a very, very key level. Uh, and if 538 doesn't fail, or if 538 doesn't hold, excuse me, we'll be filling the gap all the way down towards 534. So we'll just have to see how things end up going. So far, we are uptrending on SPY. We do look more bullish and we do favor trying to break past 544, but watch for confirmation just to see. But there is some stuff that concerns me about this rally. So one thing worth mentioning is that on ES, okay, uh, even though SPY is looking more bullish, I'm just I'm just going to call this out, ES actually has a rising wedge. If you look at this on the four-hour time frame, this is a very, very nice looking rising wedge. It looks almost perfect. So generally, this does lead to sell-offs. Generally, that, do, that does end up happening. If we end up losing 54.50, there's going to be a risk of us dipping all the way down to the lower 5400s. And if we manage to break out, watch 5500 as resistance, it is possible we try to go a little higher, but watch this rising wedge. This could lead to some selling. And generally, this pattern is more bearish. So you want to be very careful. Could the market be establishing a lower high? When you zoom out, you can see that SPY, ES, and all of these are technically uh, making lower highs. Are we about to break the high? If we break past the resistance at 5500 on ES, we could be trying to test the high again all the way up towards 5600. But if we come short of that and this gets a rejection, we could be establishing a lower high and there could be a move to the downside. So just be careful. Let me just clarify. We're bullish right now. The market is going higher. It's favoring upside. But my concern is the fact that we have a rising wedge that's forming. And generally, these rising wedges lead to downside. I want to make that very, very clear. For SPX, very similar to that of ES, we also have a rising wedge-like structure. Now, generally, these do lead to downside if we were to draw them out. So you want to be very careful with that. If we break past 5470, we're easily going up towards 5500. If we end up losing 5400 flat, look for a rug pull, especially as we have this gap to fill. So we'll see. If we lose our 50 EMA, 5400 flat, I think we're going to fill the gap to 5350. And that will lead to some more downside on SPY. So just be careful. Yes, we're bullish. We're making higher highs, higher lows. We're pushing on SPY and all these tickers. But there is that rising wedge, and that does lead to the possibility of a shift. If you look at NVIDIA, I think I closed some levels, but I think that on NVIDIA, on NVIDIA we have a very similar setup. So one concern on NVIDIA is that we have this interesting structure. We have this 118 area as a tough resistance. If we manage to break that, I think we're easily going up towards the high, towards 121. And if you fail to break that, we're going to be looking for a dip back down to 116. NVIDIA is showing some weakness right now. It also has a rising wedge-like structure. That could lead to some downside if we fail to hold 116. I'd be looking for 113 at least. Also, we have this gap to fill below, so I'll be watching to see if that ends up being uh, where we go. So yes, NVIDIA is on an uptrend, but we got to break past 118. Otherwise, there's a risk of us dipping down to 116 all over again. One concern is Bitcoin. We have a double top leg structure. If Bitcoin loses 58,000, there's going to be a risk of us going down to 55,000. 
Uh, we got a break past 59,800 at the very least to turn back up. So we're at support right here, but just watch out for the possible double top that could lead to some downside. Maybe even a triple top if you want to call this one out too. So just be careful. Uh, the QQQ looks pretty nice. Nice uptrend so far, but we're testing our uh, 200 EMA. We have 464 as resistance on the four hour time frame. If we break this, we're going to be pushing for 468 and much higher levels. But if we fail to break 464, we'll be dipping back down towards 455. So watch this 464 error, see if we break this or not, and be very, very patient nonetheless. For NQ, uh, what I want to say about NQ is the fact that unfortunately we also have a rising wedge like structure that's also developing. Uh, with this potentially forming, this could lead to some risk for the markets, depending on how you want to draw this out. But either way, like I said, we still have this very, very nice looking uptrend. Now we're bullish. We're making higher highs and higher lows, but look at our 200 EMA at 19,200. If we break that, we, we could be pushing for uh, 19,500. If we reject off that, there's going to be a risk of us coming down to the 50 EMA, which was 18,700 all over again. So we'll just have to wait and see. There's a rising wedge, but watch to see if you get a rejection. So be very, very careful. Uh, generally, these do lead to rejections. There's no sign of that yet, and the chart remains bullish, but just wait and see. Apple also has a rising wedge like structure. Apple's kind of like trying to push up. Uh, but the issue is that with the rising wedge, we need to try to break past 222 to get up to 225 plus to turn bullish. If we reject here, look at 218 as support. If we lose that, we're going to be looking for a dip. There's a rising wedge right here, so we'll see if we get that rejection. So just be very careful, especially on the four hour time frame. For um, others out there like Palantir, we have a bearish divergence starting to form. We need to break past 31.5 to remain bullish. Otherwise, there's a risk of 29.69 coming. On S uh, Supermicro or SMCI, we basically have to try to get back above 580 to hit 600. And if we lose 560, look for a dip back down towards 528. So watch and see, do we lose 558 uh, to turn bearish or do we break past 580 to turn bullish? We'll have to wait and see. We're just in the middle right now. Rivian is looking a little bit weaker. We have, once again, this uh, structure right here that's kind of bearish. We have a bearish wedge. We need to try to get back above at least 14.27 to turn back up. Otherwise, we're dipping to the 12s. So I've been saying that for a few days, and that's what's happening. We're kind of lackluster. SoFi has this nice-looking structure. we got to try to break resistance. We're still holding up decently. Uh, we're kind of stuck right now and consolidating. If we break past 6.8, we're bullish. If we lose 6.5, we can turn down. We're in the middle, so give it some time. For others out there like the IWM, IWM is kind of stuck right here as well. We have a nice looking channel that's developing, but watch this support. We got to bounce off 206. If we don't bounce off 206, we're at risk of going down to 204, then 201. So watch for that. For AMD, we tried to break out of this structure. We got a nice break, but the issue is we're just barely above 138. If we lose that, we'll be dipping back down lower. If you hold this, we could try to rebound. So just be careful. I do see a risk of this dipping uh, to about 138, and we'll see if we bounce or not. For ARM, ARM is also looking uh, a little decent right now as we're making higher highs and higher lows. We need to try to break past 130 to turn back up. Otherwise, there's a risk of 120, uh, basically 125, and then eventually 121. So I think this looks bullish. Uh, we haven't lost 125 yet, so it favors 130 again. So just be careful. If we lose that, we turn back down, so we're in the middle. For Coinbase, we're making uh, a nice looking structure, but we're starting to reject off this trend line. We need to break past 200 to remain bullish. If we fail to do so, we don't reclaim 194. We're at risk of dipping down to 188. And if 188 fails us, we have this gap to fill below. So watch those levels very carefully. For Amazon, Amazon has a rising wedge as well. So be careful with this setup, guys. We're making higher highs and higher lows. Yes, we are technically bullish, but we got to try to break past 171 or 50 EMA. If we break that, we remain bullish for 174. If we fail to break that, we're at risk of dipping to at least 168 or below that. So be careful with the rising wedge. Meta also happens to have a rising wedge. Uh, we're trying to push higher. We look bullish overall. We're making higher highs and higher lows. So there is a chance it goes up to about 535 again. But if we lose support at 525, we're going to be dipping back down to 517, at least if not lower. So be careful with this rising wedge. Microsoft, uh, technically it has one too, but I'm not going to count too much on this. We look more bullish. Uh, watch the current level we're at is resistance at 417.5. If that breaks, we're going up to 420 plus. And if we lose 412, we're going to be dipping. So watch and see what, how that ends up developing. On Google, 
we need to break past 166 uh, to remain, remain bullish. Otherwise, we look bearish. And we got a big rejection, so we still remain bearish. So I think that a 158 is likely coming if we lose 160. Look for DJT needs to break past 24.97 to turn bullish. Otherwise, it's going to continue to fall. The VIX is also on a downtrend, but despite the downtrend that's being respected, there is technically a falling wedge that's developing, which typically leads to like breakouts and upside. So we'll see if that ends up being the case. The 10 years reacting to CPI and such, so it's not really doing much. And finally, we have the dollar index, which is starting to form a four hour bounce. It has like a double bottom. So we'll see if this gets a bounce or not. But like I said, guys, so my analysis of the overall market is most tickers are still bullish. They're making higher highs and higher lows. Okay. That's awesome. It's very, very awesome to see the market doing this. However, with all these rising wedges on Meta, on Nvidia, on Apple, on you know Amazon, on all these tickers, it makes me a little concerned. ES has a rising wedge. NQ has a rising wedge. QQQ has a rising wedge. It makes me a little concerned. The market may get a rejection. So be very careful. I'm not saying it will happen. I'm saying there's a risk of it. And you need to watch your levels just for confirmation. I'm going to make that very clear so almost anyone could understand it. All right. So for Tesla, uh, we need to break past 200 and 202 to have some hope for upside. If we don't close above that tomorrow or hold it, there's a risk of us coming down to about 197 or below. All right. So I just want to give you guys a very honest assessment of that. And with that being said, I just want to thank you all so much for listening. Have a great day, guys. I'll see you guys tomorrow before the market opens. Get ready for, for some more um, uh, unemployment numbers, not to mention manufacturing and production numbers. I'll see you guys very soon but before the market opens. Have a great day, night, or evening, wherever you guys are around the world. And I, I just want to say one more thing, actually, before I... I'll conclude the video. So I try to go over bullish and bearish cases and so that you guys are prepared for anything just in case, because I do admit that I can be wrong. I'm not a fortune teller. I can't predict everything that's going to happen in the news and the markets, but I do my best. I think that I am correct the majority of the time if you were to look at this statistically. And I want to just make it very, very clear that uh, sometimes insanity can happen to the markets. The markets could be completely irrational. So I try to be rational, which is why I think that sometimes it could be difficult. And there could also be times where I'm just flat out wrong. It does sometimes happen. And I'm willing to admit that. But don't just look at the times I'm wrong. Look at the many, 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 many times I've been correct as well about my calls on Tesla and the markets over the last few years of me doing this. So it's up to you to decide whatever you want to do. Uh, but I just wanted to make that very clear and just give you guys a little announcement about that. All right. So have a good night, guys. I'll see you guys very soon tomorrow before the market opens. Take care and peace out.